Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for the second session of this Destination Day with the focus topic over tourism. Now, I'm very honored to have this um, highly respected group of gentlemen here on the stage with me, who all three represent destinations that are impacted by over tourism, and we're going to have a discussion here on how they're impacted, um, what some of the causes may be, and particularly what kind of solutions they are implementing in their cities to, to avoid over tourism. Before we start, um, I'd like to ask you to pull out your clickers one more time. We're going to ask a quick question just to set the scene for all of this. Here it comes. Have those destinations that are affected by over-tourism already developed successful measures to cope with over-tourism? What is your opinion? And then we will discuss this on the stage for you now. Okay, that's quite clear. So 67% of you say that no, at best first measures were tested. So let me discuss this with my panelists here. First of all, um, a quick round of introductions. Um, the gentleman to my left here, uh, Franz van der Arvet, is the CEO of Amsterdam Marketing. He has a long background in museum and cultural marketing, and about six year, years ago he merged four organizations in Amsterdam to start a new city marketing organization, which he now leads as, as CEO. Amsterdam, obviously one of those examples of over-tourism that we've seen in the media a lot lately. Um, to his left, we have John Torella, the tourism director at the City Council in Barcelona, okay. also one of those cities that keeps popping up in the media. He has worked in the public administration most of his career and has been involved in economic promotion since 2000 and been the director of the tourism department which coordinates tourism throughout all the municipalities in Barcelona for the past eight years. And to the far right, from the way you're looking, um, mayor Mato Frankovic, the mayor of Dubrovnik. Um, before joining, going into politics, he studied tourism and resort management, so he has a background in this field and still sits on the tourism committee of the Croatian parliament. Um, Dubrovnik, obviously, has also been in the media quite a lot, um, one reason being that due to its appearance in the Game of Thrones series, a lot of tourists have come there to see the medieval city, and that has caused some, some issues. So, gentlemen, the question posed was whether the solutions had worked yet, and the answer from the audience was no. Maybe Mayor Frankovic, what is, what is your opinion on this? So definitely. Uh, actually, we started uh, to cope with all of these problems uh, from the summer last year. Since we are new administration, just eight months old, uh, we started to implement some new practices in solving uh, the problem of over-tourism. Uh, first thing that we do not want to become victims of our own success. Since uh, we are really a popular town, one of the world's top destinations, we do not want to be recognized in the future time as overcrowded destination, because that is not the positive marketing that we have. Uh, we have different varieties of uh, tourism that's happening in uh, Dubrovnik. Uh, mostly uh, the points are uh, made at the cruise industry, since we have a lot of cruise ships coming in Dubrovnik, around 700,000 uh, tourists from the cruise ships uh, during the year. But the problem is that they are concentrated just on three days during the week. So what we did as a new administration, we approached to CLIA and uh, World Tourism, uh, World Organization of uh, Cruise Ship uh, Companies, and we spoke with them about the problem that we are facing with. And what we said is actually, uh, here is the case study, the problem that Dubrovnik is facing with uh, the number of tourists coming in the same time at one spot, and we cannot handle that. Actually, we cannot provide the uh, service of our excellent service that we want to provide in the future times. So uh, 
even in this year, 2018, and you know how hard it is to move and change some things, especially itineraries, uh, but for this year, 2018, we succeeded in uh, changing uh, the dates uh, of arrival of the cruise ships, time of arrival, so there will, no be, uh, there will in the future times, no more be, uh, cruise ships that are going to come at the same time. This is crucial for us. Then we can handle the others. We have also the problem with the daily visitors. We are working on uh, one new application in which we are going to inform tourists about what is the best time to come into Browning, best period of day. Because keeping, keeping them informed about the time of arrival is a crucial for the better experience that they will have in the future times. Okay, thank you very much. So there's already some, some successful implementation happening there. How about um, in, in, in Barcelona? Thank you. The first one is that uh, my opinion is not exactly to, uh, we don't tend to uh, speak about the overcrowded destinations probably. We need to scout the overcrowded spots or places in the destinations because the destinations are more bigger than even the, the city. In Barcelona, for example, the city of Barcelona is the center of a big destination where uh, it's possible to do a lot of things outside of the city. But it's true that the number of visitors in the city in Barcelona um, um, represents, in fact, uh, an average of daily um, a 10% more of population in Barcelona. And a 10% more of population in Barcelona daily is not a problem for infrastructures, it's not a problem for the, for the, for the city, because the number of commuters is more than that. But the problem is that um, a lot of people arrive in the same time or arrive to the same place. This is the problem to solve, in, in, I think, in, in, the, in the destination. Um, the, the challenge for the city council or for the, the, the tourist sector is to how to promote an activity that is compatible, is possible to, to, to do in the same time with the resident, resident activity in the city. The challenge is how to um, allow a positive experience, tourist experience without to um, destroy the, the, the city life. And in Barcelona is especially, I think that is like Dubrovnik probably, but because the, these spots, these spots overcrowded, are in the residential places, residential zones in the city, and this conflict is more evident. Uh, well, we'll talk about uh, the solutions that, uh, from here, but it's the main question. The, the overcrowded is not the destination, it's some places in the destination, and we need uh, uh, a lot of fuel, a lot of um, environments of the city, of the destination of Barcelona for spread better our activity. Right, this is very interesting. We heard in the session before um, on the, the management of tourist flows. So here we're managing not only tourist flows, but also the resident flows um, who are using the same transport and ways to commute. So Yeah, not, not only the places, even the infrastructures, for example. This, the transport system is interesting because we have studied the, the, the mobility patterns of the tourist visitors in Barcelona, and the tourists are more sustainable than the residents in using the, the system transport. It's because the 80% the, the arrives through the airport, that means that it doesn't exist the car, the car a particular car, and we need to use, they need to use the, the, the public transport. And the, the time that is used for the tourists is a different time mm -hmm. for the residents, except in after lunch probably we have an, an, a, a moment where it coincides both populations. And this, uh, the, the infrastructure of tourism is perfectly possible to assume this, incre this increase, except in some lines, specific lines, for going in the same places that we have said before. No? Okay, very interesting. Mr. Van der Arbeid, I, I see you nodding. Um, mm. I, I assume you have similar... Well, it's recognizable because uh, <clears throat> um, I think it's important to, to say that it's a fairly young problem. Um, it's been a very explosive on the stage, I think, since four years. Certainly in Amsterdam, it's been a huge topic. We have uh, in two weeks our uh, city elections, and this is one of the most important uh, topics. It's been very politicized. Uh, because it's about, and it's, I think, for all our cities, you see the, the cities who, who are uh, facing this challenge are always cities with <coughs> small historical inner cities, mm -hmm. like Dubrovnik, like Bruges, like Venice, like Amsterdam, a bit like Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Big cities with big boulevards don't have immediately not this problem, but this is especially a problem for uh, 
our kind of cities. And we always say we very strongly believe in a sort of triangle between uh, working, uh, living, and visiting a city. So the triangle is formed by inhabitants, by visitors, and by business. And when, when this triangle is OK, mm -hmm. it's perfect, because they together form, you could say, the soul of the city. But now you see that one side is pulling over, and that f especially inhabitants um, feel that they don't own their city anymore. And um, in Amsterdam specifically, Amsterdam is growing. We have more visitors, we have more students, more inhabitants, more businesses. So we're growing, growing, growing. Uh, but especially uh, for us with the visitors, we have an increase of 10% a year, which is a lot. Right. And um, it's very hard to cope um, uh, as a city. So while well, we're talking about solutions, so we have implemented now since two, three years, more than 60 measurements. Okay. And maybe what, if we can just start on the solutions then, what would have been the most effective ones so far? Well, first of all, I think it's about regulating. So we have been a city who has been the first city which st started talking with Airbnb. Because, of course, you always heard the official overnight stay figures, but these are always hotel related. <laughs> and as we all know, uh, the, the way of traveling has become less expensive, <coughs> the way of staying in, 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 a, in a city has become less expensive. So this is also an increase in world travel. Uh, so we talk with people from Airbnb, uh, regulations, registration, they have to pay tourism tax. Our, uh, uh, we did a lot of regulation with infrastructure, with touring cars are not now allowed to go into the city. Uh, we did a hotel stop for the center city. So no more hotels in the center city. Um, um, enforcement, really strict enforcement. We're now also thinking, uh, <coughs> the cities are thinking about developing uh, a campaign. Sh should we educate people mm -hmm. how, how, to, how to behave in a city? Uh, we're looking into that. Uh, um, uh, events, festivals spreading around. And I think one of the things we do uh, as a marketing organization is try to make the city bigger try to make the city bigger than the city center. And we do realize that all the first-time visitors to Amsterdam, they will go to the Van Gogh Museum, they will go to the Anne Frank House, uh, they will go to see the UNESCO canals. But when you're there for the second time or the third time, we can show them that there are other parts in the city and even in the metropolitan area. So we're trying to make the city bigger. And that's one of the things our foundation comes into. OK, it's very interesting. Um, I think accommodation, one thing that you've mentioned, that's, that's something that Barcelona has been... Yeah. You put a hotel stop on as well, if I remember. It's almost correctly. the same... Um, we Australia. do the same things. <laughs> right. The same thing, yes. <laughs> I, want not, I want to repeat that. But uh, <laughs> to, com to complete this, this, this framework, I think that it's important to, to understand two or three things. That, uh, first of all, is that every, every place overcrowd uh, is different than other. There are not um, receipts for everybody, for, for all the places, the same receipt. We need to adapt solutions in each case, uh, different solutions and different circumstances. The second thing that I want to underline is that it's impossible to, to tackle the, this kind of problems without having a strategic plan for the city. Uh, we need to, to, to contextualize your, your action in a, some determined place uh, according to a global strategy for the city that identify which is the objective of the city in itself mm -hmm. to, to achieve that. And in, in specifically in things quoted before from my colleagues here, at, um, in, in the overcrowding affects especially in the city, in my opinion, the public space, obviously, and the housing, or the, the using of housing as a, as a tourist uh, accommodation. And as you know, Barcelona have had a, a plan, or is a, a urban plan for um, limiting the number, or, or according to which is the number, maximum number that bets uh, for accommodation, tourist accommodation in the city, and it's the first step for uh, to be uh, effective uh, doing an enforcement according to this this maximum, mm -hmm. and after that, uh, um, even with an, an army of inspectors, we don't arrive uh, to to control a market that is hyper dynamic uh, every day, entry and go uh, go in and go out uh, listings in the in the website. And we need the third step is to work with the internet platforms strongly with them for agree uh, with them common strategies for the city. Okay, thank you. So all the measures in Dubrovnik uh, are put on under the one cap. 
and it's called Respect the City. So what we, are going, what we want to send, the, what kind of message with that is the sustainable tourism in Dubrovnik. I told you the first issue about cooperation with the CLIA and the cruise ship companies, mm -hmm. that it's already a success and it will be even a greater success in the future times. But also uh, we are working on organization of the traffic, the time management. Uh, that is also very important for the tourists to be quickly moved from side to side in order to organize uh, a big flows of tourists coming in. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not only about the numbers, it's also about the flow. So how quickly they go yeah. through, then the easier and better destination is going to become. Uh, we also implemented last year a smart city project with the people counter. So now we have the figures from last year and we know what the dates and what period of year we have a problem with. And now it's easier to work on all of those uh, things. Uh, also, the key of success is cooperation between all tourism branches that are working on the Dubrovnik. So we as a city cannot do it by ourselves. If we do not have cruise ship companies, hotels, travel uh, companies, if they are not cooperating with us, we will fail. Mm -hmm. So we are constantly working on that project, working with them and pointing out that first there is no unique solution for this. This is something that happened maybe no. two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. And we all found ourselves in that, you know, being a very, very successful. And in the same time, mostly from the uh, major public medias attacked as the towns that are destroyed by the tourists, mm -hmm. which is not true. But we are now working on implementing different solutions and being pioneers in that mm -hmm. because we are successful. So I think there is uh, no unique solution, something that we'll probably do in one month or two months. It's a period of year two or three. But keeping the tourists informed and giving them information through all these uh, even hotels, the travel industry, uh, uh, tourist companies, uh, different kind of tourist companies, probably uh, will make a bigger, uh, bigger success. Okay. Yes. And I think it's also because the way of traveling is, is changing so rapidly and you have all these platforms and then you have Airbnb and then it's in this chair dining. So it's very hard to keep up with all the new things. So every day there's a new challenge to tackle. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is, that is a, one of our major challenges. And, it, and, and there is not one solution, because it's, it keeps growing. Um, but I do have to say that it's very important that you realize that the city is owned by its people. Mm -hmm. yes. The city is owned by your inhabitants. Visitors are going away. That's why they are a visitor. Um, but the inhabitants, they form the foundation of the, of the city. They make the soul. If there are no people living there in the city, then it's not an interesting city anymore. Uh, as it, interesting as it is that there are businesses, that are people working inside the city, as it is interesting that there are visitors, because they make a city international. But it starts with the people who live in your city. So I remember... In this way, so in this way, uh, I, I think it is important to invent, to, to, con to build some um, organism to allow us to, the, to be represented the different stakeholders related with tourism. Um, traditionally, our destinations, and particularly Barcelona, have had a, a long tradition to work together, partner, the partnership, private public partnership, sorry, private public partnership is a three piece complicated. Um, a long tradition for that. And industry and administration have worked together for a uh, long time, but never have invited here um, other stakeholders like academia, experts, uh, neighbors, uh, um, environmental associations mm -hmm. that are absolutely involved in that. In 2010, the first strategic plan of tourism in the city, we identified this need, but just until now, until 2016, we have uh, created a council, tourist council in the city, um, representing all these uh, partners, all these uh, stakeholders in the city, and um, arguing about the tourism and the problem related with tourism, um, faces that never before have a talk about together. 
And I think it's a, an important tool. Obviously, that not, don't solve any problem in a specific place overcrowded. But for aborted that, you need to, to have a, a magma, an environment of dialogue with different actors, never before to be represented in this dialogue that is essential for the success in the, the future. And it's also not, all, not also, uh, always a problem of overcrowding. It's about the behavior of people. Right. Exactly. Uh, it's, the, it's about the behavior. Because cities are cities, and they are crowded. That's why they are a city. People like crowds, crowded cities. But it's the behavior of people that they, uh, which you sometimes see in, in all our cities, that people are not visiting a city. They're doing an experience. It's like they use the city as a backdrop. Yes. Um, and that's a problem. Uh, but can imagine. What, is, uh, what is important, uh, as you pointed out, uh, the new systems, uh, new technologies like RBMB and uh, the other services that made our cities uh, known and uh, easy to approach, uh, they, they are maybe a disadvantage for us in one small portion, but in another, they are a big advantage because with the new technologies, we can work on that as well. So I'll tell you that our example, example and actually we are working uh, on the system that we will have application called Respect the City. And uh, with that application, we, don't, we want to show our tourists how to behave in our city. Of course, what are the rules, uh, what people actually, the locals are expecting from them to keep them informed. But in that platform, we have a messenger and we can directly communicate with them. Right. Not saying, please avoid this area in that and that time, but better saying, uh, please, your experience is going to be greater at 4 o'clock instead coming at noon. And please, the, you are expected to wear this and this and behave this and this way, to not eat on the public spaces and etc. So there are different uh, kinds of uh, technologies that can also improve in uh, working on, on the city level. And again, the, the citizens are our main goal. So being sustainable towards citizens and making sustainable tourism, it makes uh, the life easier of all of us and it makes destinations a uh, five-star destination, definitely. So, so some of the common topics that are here amongst all of you is one is collaboration or cooperation is important between the different stakeholder groups that are involved in tourism, but also impacted by tourism. Um, so the citizens being one of the main ones. And the other one is definitely communication, that you communicate with these stakeholders on a proactive level. And I, that's what I actually always liked about the I Amsterdam campaign, that that was tying in the marketing to tourists, but there was also a lot of um, information given, given to residents. And the third to me is, uh, is measurement. Um, how do you measure success, or how do you measure the tourism flows within a destination? Because who do you measure? Who do you measure? How do you define a tourist? Is a person on a boat a visitor? <laughs> is he registered? Is an Airbnb person registered? It's a tricky one. So, so and there's no, and that's an interesting thing. There is no European regulation on this, and I think we should really work now on a European regulation, for instance, like Airbnb, because Airbnb doesn't give. Uh, details about the owners. They don't do this, um, which is complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see that we are all struggling. Every city is struggling with this sharing platform. So it is time, I think, to make their European wide regulation for it because the problem or the challenge of how you call it will not go away. That's an interesting point. I'll take that up in the minister's panel this, yes, this afternoon. Yes, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do. No, it's true, because the, 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 this not, not regulation at, at European level, at, in some times at the, 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 the national level, uh, avoids to the, city, the cities to, to, to fight against some phenomenon like yeah. this. No? Because the, the capacity of regulate to, to make laws or to, 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 well, in any case, to regulate, is not in the, in the hands of the city. Mm -hmm. And we are uh, uh, alone from the, in from the danger here. No? It's for that that it's essential to cooperate with the platforms. Uh, in Catalonia, for example, is, uh, the law is uh, at the regional level. In Catalonia, we have 
the, the, the lack for to, to, to set the, it's compulsory to publish the number of regist register number for any accommodation uh, advertisement on the website. And this facilitates the inspection, the enforcement, because any uh, uh, um, adver advertisement with a number of registers is not legal. But uh, it's technologically really easy for the platforms to avoid that any uh, uh, ad advertisement, what, um, what at least was posted in the website without this number, but it's easy to do for them, but it's not, uh, it's not, do it's not done until now. No? And we need to work with them to achieve that. Okay, so if we could get out a wishing well, and you could have any data you wanted that would help you to, to manage your, your destination or your tourism, what, what, what would it be, maybe? So, I would first say that Croatian laws and local city laws are pretty much regulated, and we actually have exact data uh, from the uh, even home rentals and etc. So, mm -hmm. those those uh, rules are pretty strict and they are uh, very well organized. Uh, we do have a number of nights that rise from year to year. From last year, we have 17% uh, rise just in one year. And this year, expect we are expecting 10% more. Mm -hmm. uh, we are airplane destination. Majority of the tourists are coming through the airplane, so we have exact figures. Uh, we do, do know where are the problems and we see them straight. And it's, uh, as I said in the beginning, just about organization and the management of the city, nothing else. And uh, being a tourist destination, you know that the first rule is to be the open city. You cannot forbid to anyone to come. And you can someone is expecting, of course, that it's easier to say, listen, we are going to stop when we, have, when we reach 4,000. And then you wait. But we are not a museum. We are a live city yep. where people come and go. Mm -hmm. So you need to cope with that. And this is why I said, inform, inform, inform. Give them di different periods. Give them different dates. Give them different time. Mm -hmm. Give them a service of information in order to organize. Because Otherwise, you will stop. And then people say, come on, those people from Dubrovnik are crazy. We are not going to go there. And on another side, you have advantage of coping with the public view of overcrowded destination. Mm -hmm. And you need to handle between those two and provide the best service. So this is actually the first year that we will measure all the actions that we have taken uh, from the last year and see uh, what we are doing wrong and change it for the next year. Because as I said on the beginning, there is no unique solution. And there is no destination that looks alike. Everyone has something different within its uh, own destination. Mm -hmm. We are all successful cities, but with different problems. So we do not have a problem with uh, the uh, internet providers uh, of hotel accommodation, apartment accommodation. We really don't have a problem with that. But we have some other problems mm -hmm. in the issues. Very small, tiny town that it's very popular. And everyone wants to see it. And you know, when uh, they were saying to me, come on, give them some other attraction. I said, we have many attractions around us. Really many attractions, beautiful islands, everything. But when someone is coming for two or three hours, they want to come to see the old town. That's it. They are not interested in something other. So keeping them informed, giving them the better time, and being unorganized, especially about public spaces. We are now making some severe things about making the tables out from the public spaces. No, the restaurants, cutting the number of uh, uh, tables, cutting the number of the seats in order to make public spaces wider mm -hmm. for easier to accept a bigger number of tourists. And these are harsh decisions mm -hmm. because being a politician, you have to be uh, to go at elections at uh, mm -hmm. me three and, a, three and a half years. You know, someone needs to vote for you. But anyways, at the beginning, 
you have to put your town, your destination as the number one. And take all the hard decisions, because someone will not like them now, but maybe in five or six years, they will see that they were good things to do. Yeah, so this, this long-term view to... It's a long-term. There is no yes. short-term uh, This is, this is essential. You have to know where are, you, where are you heading. And it's difficult because I think cities like, like Barcelona and certainly Amsterdam, it's really weird to say, let's put a wall around it and stop it. Because we, are, we have an, Amsterdam as an image of the mo one of the most tolerant cities in the world since the 16th, 17th century. Open city, everybody, all religions were welcome. So it's very strange for us now, then sort of, but it's, there, there are too many people coming. Uh, and for us, what's, what is very, makes it extra complicated also in data, is that half of our visitors, we have 800,000 people, 17 million, so one seven million visitors, uh, of which half of them are Dutch. These are daytime visitors because we're the capital, and you know we're a small country, so in two hours you're somewhere else outside the country. So a lot of people come during the day to Amsterdam, and what you see sometimes is that this whole problem, um, tourists get victimized. It's everything is caused by the tourists. Yeah. I think, no, half of them are Dutch people, like my sister, <laughs> also coming to the city. <laughs> so. Uh, who are we talking about? So, and, and I do agree with the mayor. It is every city, it's for every city totally different. Mm -hmm. uh, different measurements, different rules. And it's, it's like a, 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 um, it's like a multi-headed monster. But, and it doesn't go away. So you really, really have to think about measurements and, and, and uh, being very strict. Mm -hmm. I think that it's important in this, in this way to uh, don't avoid to talk about the management of tourism and the management of the city separately. Yes, exactly. In our experience, our process has been during a lot of years uh, only promoting, promoting the city because the objective was attract people, because Barcelona don't was then uh, a destina tourist destination. After that, we discovered the need to manage tourism in the city. is another stage in our process. During four or five years, uh, my, my, my own direction uh, of tourism in the city, uh, manage the tourism in the city. And now we are saying uh, another thing absolutely different. We are uh, managing a city with tourism. And that means that all the areas of the city council, all the administrations involved in that, are uh, part of responsibility in its issue to manage tourism in city. It's not a problem for the tourist direction or tourist sector. It's a problem for the city. And uh, it's obvious in the, in the, uh, under this perspective that um, in, in one determinate place, not, on, not all fits in, fits in good or fits in well. No? It's, impos it's impossible to, to put in a, in a place full, overcrowded, more people, more people, more people. We need to establish rules. Difficult with when, when it's in a residential area, but essential in any case, because the, the, the um, balance between the residential life and the visitor experience is essential, not for the city, for the tourist sector, for the tourist experience, for the, the, the tourist fairs like ITV in Berlin. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, and you, you, you change from a destination marketing organization to a destination management organization. Yes. I think right. marketing mm. a city is very old-fashioned. Um, we don't use the word tourists anymore. We always we talk about visitors, exactly. because a tourist, there's always something wrong with a tourist. Um, and you have a convention, like we, we are now people in Berlin. We're in, we are here on business, so we're a business visitor. But tonight, maybe we'll go to a restaurant, or you stay the weekends, and you become a tourist. So it's very strange. We always say you have to talk about visitors. They all have to be treated at the same way. Um, um, but it is, uh, it is uh, very, very, I think, old-fashioned, just, just talk about getting more people to your city. That's not a sustainable thing to do anymore. You really should think about the future of your city and you the importance. To, you, need to, sorry, you need to differentiate between residents and visitors according to the different needs of lo logistic ma management. Okay because the behavior is different, the needs are different, the, the timetable is different. But in terms of rights, in terms of open the city for everybody, it's not different one another. Yeah. 
So what, what do you think about the, the topic of um, looking at yield per tourist rather than the numbers? There's a lot of goal, strategic marketing plans still get set in terms of numbers. We always hear about numbers because that's often one thing that we can, we can measure. But if we get 1,000 visitors that, that spend 10 euros each, or we get 100 visitors that spend 100 euros each, we're going to make the same, have the same economic impact, but maybe less of a yeah. social and environmental impact. Is that something that features in your discussions with your stakeholders? Quality tourists. Yeah. Right. I always think, what's the quality then? Are we talking about intellect? Uh, are we talking about money? Are we talking about interest? Or are they all handsome? What is a quality tourist? I don't know what it is. So it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. we, I do know that you have to in the case of Amsterdam, promote culture, design, architecture, food, all these things. But if the, when there are two students and they do all the cultural things, but they stay in a hostel because they're poor, are they a quality tourist? I don't know. So it's a difficult discussion. Uh, when you look at the tourists, I think the completely wrong approach is to say, you know, we like more th those five-star tourists than those that are staying or sleeping under the tent. They are all the tourists. And by some way, they communicate outside about your town. They go back home, they speak about it, they do a marketing. So there are different types of marketing that they can do, positive and negative. So we used to, for many years, we had a figure number of tourists, and with that, we were measuring our success. If we achieve yeah. percent, bigger percentage, we will all go on public media and say, we are very successful. Last year we had this figure, this year we have that figure, and we are successful. But this is completely wrong approach. Being su successful means providing high quality of service. So did we all ever make a good quality approach to all of those tourists asking them, how do you feel in, your, in our town? What is good? What is bad? What we have to change? How do you think we should do it? You know, because on the internet providers, you have hotels, you can see reviews. How do they feel about hotel? How do they feel about restaurant? But we need to do that the same thing about destination. Mm. And we getting the exact number and figures about those destinations, then we can say this is something that we can compare with and say we are doing good, bad, or poor. We have to change it, uh, give it better. Because only counting the number of tourists coming in destination is completely wrong approach. Mm -hmm. OK. Unfortunately, we're already heading towards the end of this very interesting discussion. I'd like to give each of you just one minute as a closing word, let's say, to what, what would be your advice for other destinations that have not yet achieved the, the success that your three destinations have, that have yet to plan for tourism to grow? How can they avoid um, maybe struggling with the numbers of tourists in the future. What would be your, your message to the other destinations in the room or, or listening on the live feed? Don't build an airport. <laughs> 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 so it's restricting access. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, shall I start? Yeah, you have um, one minute. I think when, when you are a destination and you're starting to invest in, in your destination, uh, by building, for instance, new cultural institutions, museums. And we have opened and or re, uh, uh, renovated seven big museums in Amsterdam, and we sort of did not realize what the impact would be in the coming years, that everybody would come to see the Rijksmuseum and the Van Gogh Museum because they're wonderful institutions. So you really have to think when you plan, when you invest in a city for the future, also what does that uh, mean in, in, in maybe the growth of visitors. And as, as the mayor so well said, how are we going to facilitate this? And how are we going to regulate this? And from growth is not the magical word. Mm -hmm. You can grow, but it has to be sustainable. And I think the most important thing is don't forget, don't forget your inhabitants. 
because they are your ambassadors, but they also can be your opponents. So take them with you. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that it's essential to break this relation between um, more is better. More is not always better. And uh, in tourism, I think in urban tourism at least, and in uh, some natural uh, destinations the, is the, the same, more is not um, better always. And for that, it's essential to put the promotion uh, in relation with the management of the city. It's impossible to continue uh, trying to attract people to, uh, towards destinations that are overcrowded. Uh, we need to change the equation, you need to change the factors. Uh, when you uh, go out this hall around you in ITV or in World Travel Market or in, in any fair of tourism in Barcelona, you, in Barcelona in the world, in Europe, you can compare the, the efforts dedicated to attract people and the efforts dedicated to, to, to solve the problems uh, for this attraction. And it's absolutely disproportionate. We need to uh, balance this uh, efforts and the tourism industry must be aware that the destination is, um, is, fra is fragile and is dangerous to, 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 to destroy. <laughs> I don't. Okay, thank you very much. And I will tell you my experience. Even Dubrovnik is a very popular town for many hundreds of years, being a popular destination. But recently, in the 1990s, we had a war. After the war, there were no tourists. 80% of our economy is tourism. So you can think how people survived at that time. So from the time of 2000, when the tourism numbers started to grow, probably we didn't saw it in Horizon coming in, being a so popular destination. So then we were not thinking about that someday we will be again popular with a big number of tourists. So we are cheering, you know, with the marching bands when the cruise ships were coming, when the guests were coming in Dubrovnik, organizing folklore dances and etc. and etc. trying uh, to promote our town, because we really went through very very hard times. Uh -huh. So I would say one very important aspect of the tourism is the security, because without security in destination, no one is going to come there. Uh -huh. No one wants to go in the unsecure place. So we will, in Dubrovnik, we will never forget about that. Uh, what is also crucial and important, majority of our, our towns are built for inhabitants. Dubrovnik has 46,000 inhabitants. Sewage, electricity, water, roads, everything is for that number of uh, people that are living in there. During the summertime, you have a double number of those people that are coming there. So, also, prepare every destination for that. Mm -hmm. Make everything bigger, stronger, capable of handling all those things. And then things in the future time when the number of tourists uh, is becoming bigger are easier to handle. But again, there is no unique solution and probably in two or three years we will be even smarter in some things and we can change between ourselves, our experience, what we had done good, what we had done bad, and maybe that will help others in the future times to be more successful. By that time, I assume that we all are going to be absolutely 100% sustainable destinations. Okay. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a great note to, to close on. Um, before we wrap this session up, though, we, you, you've heard some solution mentioned now, and we have one more um, live voting questions here for you. Um, which should come up on the screen now. Are the measures that we discussed here sufficient and transferable to other affected destinations? So this is some feedback to, to the panel members also on, on whether, mm. whether you think their solutions will work elsewhere. So if we can start the clock, pick up your clickers on the left-hand side of your chair, I think. All right. Here it comes, with the music. <laughs> I think number two. Not quite. Not, not correct. quite. Which is true. Yes. But I think that, that goes back to That's the message. Correct. That goes back to the message that, that every destination is slightly different. You will need to adjust it to the local context. But I think if we take the no, not at all out, 
You know, you're 90%, you're having some impact with your, um, with your measures here. So that just leaves me to say, thank you well, moltes gracias, and vala liepa <laughs> for your um, participation here today, and enjoy the rest of your ITB, thank you. and thank we'll you. see all of you back here in 15 minutes for the cruise panel. Thank you. Thank you.